Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. So my name is Kevin Zawodzinski, so you get the full spelling there or pronunciation there. Um, I am the America's Vice President of Sales Engineering for Commvault, so have this conversation quite a bit with our friends with AWS and obviously a lot of customers as well. So looking forward to talking about you know, the modernization side of things, transformation, and, and how that impacts all of you. So, Victor. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, guys. My name is uh, Victor Bichet. I run uh, the alliances between Commvault and AWS, so uh, work on having uh, joint solutions with AWS for data protection. And Sean. And I'm Sean Puponich, uh, so I work as an SA with um, Commvault as a partner, as well as with uh, our joint customers and AWS customers across the entire storage segment. Awesome. Yeah, and there will, there's going to be a spelling test on our last name. <laughs> <laughs> all right, just moving on. So. First of all, just really want to throw out uh, essentially the mission statement, right? We liberate uh, people to do amazing things with data. The point there, right, besides a great marketing slogan, is really the focus shouldn't be on backup, which is also, you know, often thought about. It's about how can we do things to make things simpler for organizations. So whether you're doing store, protect, optimize, utilizing that data, it's really about how do we make things simple how do we continue to help you with the challenges that you're facing? How do we make sure that whether you're in a hybrid cloud situation or you're completely in AWS, how do you continue to, to meet the challenges of your organizations and move forward, right? So as you see that, that's what we really are here to talk about and ultimately that's uh, the, the big goal here. So. When you look at it from a journey perspective, one of the things that many of you probably don't understand or don't realize is how long that AWS and Commvault has been working together, right? So almost since inception, we've been working together and really focusing around a lot of our customer, customer obsession side of things. I know AWS is very passionate about that and almost coined the term, but I think it fits well with the culture of Commvault as well. So it's not just about technology, it's also about how do we work together? How do we make sure we're satisfying our customer base? How we make sure that you're going to get the best bang for your buck and how do you ultimately, again, feel the most comfort and strength in your overall data management capabilities. Victor, I know you wanted to say Yeah, and, and to, to Kevin's point, uh, when you're looking at backup and data protection in general, it's important to see uh, where we're going and where we've been together. So you can see this is more than a decade of work with AWS. We have hundreds of petabytes under protection with AWS, and as you can see over the years, the innovation hasn't stopped. Uh, if you go all the way to last year, uh, for example, at reInvent, AWS launched a new a storage class, which was a Glacier in Instant Retrieval. Um, Commvault was one of those few ISVs that were uh, they're doing that API integration pre-launch and making sure that with every new service that comes out from AWS, uh, that Commvault's ready to protect it. So uh, think of Commvault uh, not just as a tool that will help bridge the on-prem and hybrid worlds, the cloud, but even as more and more of uh, you start to use AWS native services, uh, Commvault is continuously ensuring that uh, we have direct integration and able to protect the latest and greatest from AWS. So AWS and Commvault have a really strong partnership, but I want to explain that in terms that you would understand as value to a customer. Um, and so there are really two areas I look at the partnership, and one is in terms of product, and the other in terms of customer implementation. So on the product side, uh, as Kevin mentioned, we really align on a lot of similar values. So if you look at AWS as a whole, you know, we're constantly espousing security, resilience, cost efficiency, and we're constantly talking with Commvault about how to achieve that on AWS. So as we're building new services, as we're building new features, they're integrating that into the product uh, to help make that a reality for customers. And then when we get down to the actual implementations, uh, I've been very happy to work with them directly on customer calls. Uh, the teams that they bring to the table, uh, their SAs, um, are very good at working with us, listening to the customer problem, and, and finding a solution and optimizing on a lot of those key pillars that I just mentioned, cost, security, ease of maintenance. Yeah. 
Awesome. So um, before I flip the next slide, just one more point on that. So uh, a, a quick stat for you. In June, we'll have our next rev, right, uh, from a Convol perspective. We have 68 features that are going into the product in that rev that are from cu customer asks, essentially. So, you know, that's something we do on a very consistent basis, right? Making sure we're listening to the customer, integrating the things that they need, and obviously working with our partners on that as well. So. Do you touch on this? Uh, so in public sector, um, you know, for AWS, uh, a big part of that is um, compliance, supporting things like uh, FedRAMP. Uh, in particular, uh, we support FedRAMP moderate in all of our U.S. commercial regions, and we support FedRAMP high in the GovCloud. Uh, and so every step of the way, Commvault has been there to make sure that they also offer support uh, in those regions. And if we have a customer with a, a FedRAMP environment, that they're able to operate uh, their software there as well. So I will add to that, sorry. Um, on that too, right, even conversations in the last 24 hours have had a few different customer conversations. And really, what we're also seeing is a lot of customers trying to figure out exactly how do they actually continue to evolve, which will go into some of the further, further conversations. But what we're seeing is, again, that hybrid landscape, we talk about it, right, of how do you choose what applications you're going to take first? How are you going to make sure that you have the right process to move forward? And, and that's true whether it's in commercial space or federal space, public sector in, in general, right? You need to understand what are your flexibilities, what are your capabilities, so you can make the right choices on how you, how you move forward. And that's pretty key. Um, so really, ultimately, going into the speed bump side of things, what do we see? When you're starting to talk about what we want to do around modernization, obviously data silos, uh, large surface areas for cyber, you know, cost and everything else. Ultimately, the point is, is you, you need to take a step back, understand the rationalization side of things. Um, if, you, if you don't do that, right, what you're going to do is find that you're going to move quickly. You're going to move very quickly, but you're going to also say, I'm, I'm stuck at a certain point. Right, because you haven't thought through the process of exactly how you're going to go through that. But with, with that, right, what we do together is give you that flexibility. How can we actually, again, leverage the hybrid side of things to bring you to the cloud? And then there's going to be things that, frankly, you may want to either repatriate, excuse me, um, but ultimately, at the right time, move back into the cloud, right? So as you look at this, is really first, what's the plan? Understand the plan so you don't hit these modernization stum uh, speed bumps, excuse me, and stumbling blocks, right? And with that, again, that's how we work really well with AWS to make sure that we're moving forward and we're continuing to, to progress you as an organization and us together. Anything there, I guess? No, and I, I think if you're looking at those different kind of uh, bullet points here, the, the thing to remember is, for example, if you look at the second thing around ransomware, um, when people look at backup, uh, backup has evolved over the years, and we, we like to think of this as a broader uh, data management strategy. Uh, and to Kevin's point is, um, we need to start to understand as we're moving to the cloud, are we ready? Um, and with that, are, how are we gonna manage the data? Um, and things, once workloads start to move to the cloud, we need to start to have a different kind of lens on how we deal with this, on what our schedules and downtimes look like, how our high availability strategy looks like, what's our security strategy. Um, and so these are, generally speaking, some of the issues that you get executive buy-in a lot of times, yes, we do need to move to the cloud. And then when you start to go into the details of it, you might start to face some of these challenges because now you're dealing with uh, some different environments that you haven't dealt with before. Uh, and it's really important to kind of have a holistic view. And I think one of the things that we try to offer is provide you, uh, and you'll see this as, as we go along, much more than just the idea of being able to move a workload from on-prem to the cloud or even within cloud, but how to understand uh, the, as that surface area changes, how are we protecting that? How are we uh, making sure our SLAs are correct? How are we thinking about RPO and RTO when we're talking about cloud and, and egress? Uh, so this is, these are some of the things that we spend a lot of time thinking of because that is really our core focus is data protection and data management. Yeah, so modernization is basically all speed bumps, and so having mature software and having competent partners to, to help customers get through these is really key. Awesome. Yeah, so 
I had a conversation, I literally had a meeting, a lunch meeting today, and, and I told the, the customer I met with he could have done this slide himself, because he really talked about their journey. Uh, and it's an agency that hasn't moved a lot just yet to AWS or anyone else for that matter. And they're really looking at how, is, how are they gonna proceed in their modernization journey. And the first thing they're gonna do is actually look at how do I do backup? So if you follow this slide, right, they wanna know that they're gonna be prepared to protect any assets that, that go into AWS, right? So they want to make sure that they can um, back it up, make sure they can protect it, make sure that they can move it around if they need to, make sure that those assets, again, are, are fully capable and they have con confidence, excuse me, to go back to their organizations and their leadership and say, we're good, right? So many start there and obviously as you continue to progress up the, the chasm here, so it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, you're gonna go full modernization with, you know, we're gonna do EKS and containers, you're gonna do orchestration of some sort with Ansible or others. It doesn't matter where you are on the journey, you need to understand how that plays in and you need the capabilities to do that, right? So you look at, at the bare bones, right? So on the left-hand side, you see deduplication, things of that nature. You're gonna look at cost. A lot of times that's what we think is the initial driver for cloud consumption, is looking at cost. But it's also about these other things and as you advance in your usage and your capabilities, you're gonna wanna look at how do I do advanced orchestration, right? How do I look at uh, other things from a policy automation perspective, how do I leverage tags, and how do I make sure that the all the software that I'm using builds in r really well to that system and that ecosystem, because if we don't support each other by, by directionally, we create issues, right? So well, that's again, to, to Sean's point about the advancements, the continuing forward, to making sure that we're working together on whether it be API integration or what have you, we're in lockstep. Yeah, and, and to this point, when you look at that different parts of the journey, um, I really think this is where uh, some uh, a software solution like Commvault fits in very nicely because we deal with a lot of customers who are just doing the very early stages in that journey, and we deal with some customers that are very advanced in AWS, and and the same software is able to do both, um, and that's because it's it's based on the same source code, um, and all of that functionality is is there within uh, that tool. So it actually grows with your journey itself. Um, case in point, some of the more advanced native services that you see on the right-hand side, um, as more and more, and this is a very common uh, journey path. There's different paths, of course, as people evolve with the cloud, but we see that lift and shift traditional idea of first starting to move your workloads, your monolithic workloads to cloud, and then as you get more comfortable with AWS, you start to use some of those more uh, AWS services or platform services like managed database capabilities, Redshift, which is uh, a data warehouse solution. Um, and you want to be having a solution that's future-proof for you. You know as you start to move to these services, you start, you know you're protected uh, to be able to back up these services as well. We, we talked about this earlier that uh, it's, when you're thinking of getting an insurance policy, uh, you don't want to make sure that, oh, did I get the insurance for the house, but did I miss the car? Or did I do it for fire, but not flood? Uh, and really, that's what you get with Commvault. You get that kind of holistic protection, um, whatever service you want to or plan to be using. Awesome. Yeah, on top of that, right, you start looking at security. Security's on top of everyone's mind today, obviously, for, for lots of reasons, and there's a lot of, lot of bad actors or potential bad actors out there. So we also integrate, obviously, a lot of different things directly out of the software. Not uh, We don't nickel and dime everybody, right? Ultimately, when you look at things like what are we doing around identity management, so plugging into IAM, plugging into other different uh, functions within AWS itself to make sure that you can have a consistent and holistic security posture from uh, identity management and everything else. Uh, also adding on to that, simple things, right? So we have really simple dashboards that we leverage as well. Again, clickable, actionable things. And I, th I find that being the biggest difference, right? When we have a security dashboard, we'll talk about have you enabled multi-factor authentication? Right, which I know a lot of agencies are looking at. So we can obviously do that. Do you have the password complexity up to a level that you find suitable for your organization? Right, 
quick and easy look. And if you don't, you can drill down and obviously fix it. But it gives you, again, that sense of comfort, so to speak, of understanding where you stand from a security posture. And it's really that first piece. And it allows us to look at the layers of security within your, your platform and the way you're doing it within your ecosystem to make sure that you're grabbing the best things and how you want to deploy your security is there. Other things we're doing, such as honeypots, right? So if you're not familiar with that concept, think of it very simply as we put a little breadcrumb out there, somebody goes and touches it, if we, they touch it, we know that something nefarious is happening. We've worked with public agencies on this. We've actually seen where we actually picked up uh, ransomware events or cyber encryption events before intrusion detection and other mechanisms. So there's things, again, that we do and we are constantly thinking about security just holistically within it. And obviously we, we plug in really well to the S3 object locked as well. And I don't know if you want to expand on that, Sean. Yeah, so security is, is one of those areas that it's, it's very difficult to, to be an expert in, right? It's constantly changing. Um, and when you look at the kind of security profile that Commvault offer, offers, it's, it's really that combination. They have a lot of features built into the software, uh, such as the anomaly detection, but they're also taking advantage of AWS integrations like Object Lock. And so what Object Lock does is it allows you to create a strongly immutable backup. And so it's not tied to your um, existing administrative uh, system. So even if you have a, a root admin of your AWS account or your organization, once those things are object locked, there's nothing they can do. They can't go and, and erase them or, or delete the backups or the backups of the backups. So you have that, that level of protection there. <coughs> that you're gonna keep going. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. Well, you know, and, and this, is, this is a nice summary of, of what we've just been talking about. Um, the native support is probably one of the things that we're most proud of in our continuous relationship with AWS. And that's why I really think that not all backup solutions are created equal. It's the level of integration that you have with all of these services. Um, add to that the ability, and I think Kevin uh, touched on that, uh, of the deduplication, kind of if you want to go to the, um, yep. the next part. And that's where, uh, if you think of the pillars that are very important when people are moving, working with AWS, you know, cost, high availability, security, performance. Um, so not only are we uh, having that innovation in terms of the modern workloads we support, we're trying to also optimize on cost, which is very important. So that's available from things like deduplication, which we make sure that um, you are not paying unnecessarily more uh, for your backup data. Uh, but even interestingly, how we've built our own uh, capabilities uh, is we've made sure that that utilizes some of those kind of next generation services like autoscaling from AWS. Autoscaling, as you might know, is one of those capabilities that will allow you to expand on your compute footprint only when you need it. So that's another way of savings and making sure you're not overspending. Uh, we, uh, when AWS came out with the next generation of compute with their Graviton instances, uh, we were one of the first to make sure that we had that availability. Uh, and what that ends up uh, meaning to the end customer is at the end of the day, uh, you're spending less because you are uh, using more cost-effective compute. Um, when we think of doing EBS uh, integration, so this is the integration into the block storage side of the house. One of the, th one of the reasons we did this, and we've seen that especially from healthcare customers, um, is the ability to be faster in terms of backup and recovery because now you're integrating directly um, into these kind of workloads as opposed to uh, going into the object store. So uh, I think Kevin mentioned this earlier, a lot of these solutions have come based on real customer use cases. So we start to see how can we always evolve and improve uh, and make sure it's cost effective, it's resilient, and it's future proof. And so if you're not, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> if you're not already familiar uh, with AWS, um, some of these things can come off as, as a little bit of techno jargon, but these are really the things that, that move the needle in terms of cost, in terms of performance, in terms of security. These are the things that we work day in, day out uh, in our partnership to ensure that customers have easy access to and they don't have to do a lot to, to be able to use them. So you're not gonna have to read the full AWS manual to be able to enable and use some of these features. Yeah. And if you're comparing it to a similar solution that hasn't done some of these steps, 
um, they're just not going to be able to offer quite the same level of optimization. So if something is running on a more expensive instance and not using Graviton, there, there's no substitute for that. They've taken the extra engineering step to make sure that their software can run on that more cost-effective and efficient instance type. Yeah. Yeah, and same same point on the API integration, right? Yeah. I mean, we we are constantly evolving that, and uh, you know I know we work really closely on that. So the API integration is super critical. You know, making sure from a snap perspective and everything else. We mentioned EBS Direct, of course, but uh, that's just a couple, right? There's many, many more. So. Starting to wrap things up a little bit here, what's also really important, and we talk about this in different terms, but I'll, I'll use it in human capital management at the end of the day, right? We talk about simple. How do we make things simpler? One of the things is making your life simpler of how, do you, how are you going to manage and, and interact with the system. And ultimately, it's about how do we make things really clean and crisp and simple. Sounds silly in a way, right, that, the, that a GUI matters these days, but it does, right? So we can integrate regardless of where your protection or storage is and everything else. Where you need that integration, we can do it through one single pane of glass, right? Multi-region doesn't matter, right? Different, different uh, um, you know, infrastructure sets doesn't matter. Different applications don't care, right? So ultimately the point is, is trying to make your life easy so you can go in, couple clicks, be done, have that integration, and as Sean said, right, you don't know what's going on with that API in the background, and nor, nor do you necessarily need to. If you want to, we'll tell you about it, right? But the ultimate goal is to do that without your visibility and without your knowledge so your life is easier and it is very simple, right? So really driving forward, again, that simplicity message, making sure that the integration is tight and understanding that, you know, when you want to go and, de excuse me, deploy something, it's two, three clicks rather than I'm going to have to go script something, right? Or I'm going to have to put in this massive crazy workflow around anything else, right? And that goes to whether it's, uh, you know, integration with third party, other products that also work seamlessly with, with the both of us, uh, that actually plugs in as well. So, great opportunities to make your life a little bit easier. All right. So, so really at the end of the day, I mentioned this earlier, a second ago actually, the simplified side of things. When you really break it down, it's about simplifying things, making sure you're protected, optimizing as we've talked about quite a bit. And then optimization is an interesting point because you think about, hey, when I first go and I move things to cloud, whether it's lift and shift or cloud native or wherever you are in that journey, you're going you're gonna to get some optimization. You need to understand that it's probably a, understanding your configuration drift is going to be really key, right? Understanding have you changed things, have things changed in your ecosystem, so you revisit that optimization side of things to make sure that whatever you want to do from whether it's technology optimization or cost optimization, you're still reaping those benefits. And then obviously the last piece on the acceleration side of things, it's really about how do I move faster? And, and I think what we found, again, if you look at the, the four stages, right, from starting it back up and then going to advanced application, essentially, or cloud native nirvana, I think is what we called it on the slide. Thank you, marketing. Um, you know, you really think about that, and it's really, hey, I can start on this one piece. Once I feel solid, the next rev is easier, the next rev is easier, the next rev is easier, and all those things get more seamless, again, because of the simplified side of things, and it does allow you to accelerate your journey. Jens? Yeah, maybe on the acceleration piece to your point, I think one of the interesting things is if you think of the stages of moving and shifting workloads to the cloud, uh, almost I would say security and data protection are probably priority zero. Um, and you know, it, it's that analogy of having brakes on, the, on your car, having these brakes uh, some people would say uh, they, they allow you to stop, but what they really allow you to do is, is accelerate, is to drive faster when you know your brakes are working. And that's, that's really the idea we want about data protection. If you know your data is protected in the cloud, that's going to help you accelerate. And that's what we've seen in multiple, multiple use cases is when you have Convault with AWS, you've now been able to, A, deploy faster, but also because you have that tool, you have that confidence of doing projects uh, in a much more uh, faster and accelerated fashion, really. Yeah. 
And we are at time, so appreciate everyone's attention and sitting through the conversation here. Um, so again, as you see in the last here, if you wanna, I don't know if you wanna do it or you want me to do it, but uh, just on the marketplace, that's a big key as well. So you can leverage the marketplace to integrate with us to make sure you can procure. If you have contracts and things of that nature, wonderful, we can work with you on that. Um, so thank you again, really appreciate the time. Um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, yep. Victor. And the uh, marketplace purchases also count towards uh, EDP for AWS as well. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. <laughs> marketplace count towards EDP. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank Thanks you, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so if there are any questions, uh, one of the things that we didn't really talk about quite as much is um, some of the real customers that we work with. Um, so I work with public sector customers all day long, uh, a lot of them very early in their uh, cloud journey. Um, and so one of the things I like about working with Commvault uh, in their solution is um, they don't have to go all into cloud to start getting uh, some of the benefits th that we talked about. So we have a lot of customers that will start with, you know, two data centers and backing up the tape and shipping that off to a vault, and they'll start with uh, trying to get rid of their tapes. And so they'll get a third copy to us, they'll use object lock to make that ransomware protected, and then because it's online, they have a faster way to recover that than if they, you know, had to dig it out of a vault and put it on a truck and stuff like that. And then once they get comfortable with that, then they start asking more questions and they're like, okay, well, now that I'm not using tapes, you know, why am I creating these full backups for 30 years and holding on to them? Amen. You know, how can I how can I reduce my costs more here? And so then we'll talk about deduplicating long-term archives. So your strategy in the cloud uh, can actually change relative to what you do on-prem because cloud storage is much more durable than any hard drive or any tape. So normally, if you have a tape, set of tape archives and you lose one, you've, you've lost that, that data. If you tried to deduplicate de across tapes, you would, you would lose the entire set. But with cloud, because the storage is so much more reliable, you can do that sort of long-term archiving and deduplication and get huge efficiencies over a lot of the traditional processes you'll do today. Thanks, Sean. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, I think we'll wrap. Thanks again. Thank you, guys. Thank you.